In doing research on issues that my viewers want to be aware of, I come across documented information from time to time that even I find, well, uh, to put it mildly, very concerning. One issue that I've been following for the last several months is shaping up to impact us in very real and profound ways. As we pointed out several times on the channel over the last several months, the issue that's playing out in real time is in front of us. And this summer may be a moment where we're gonna see dramatic shifts. At the time of recording this video, Texas is already shattering various heat records. And this new data, which we're gonna discuss momentarily, is yet another anomaly that's way out of the normal ranges from recorded data over the last several decades. We very well may be on the cusp of seeing our world changing rapidly, and you need to know what to do now to brace for the impact and how to prepare. It's closer than you may think, so let's jump in. Recent observable world changes. Before we jump into this discussion, let me say something. I realize the discussion of trends related to observable patterns of increased temperatures upset some within this community as they conflate this discussion with politics. Depending on which side of the aisle that you stand on, you're gonna see this differently. And most will see this discussion as either an affront or a confirmation to their political beliefs. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know that I purposefully avoid the political element in my discussions and instead, I focus on what we can observe and then try to form a game plan off that information. I've been in this community for quite some time and I realize that it's a big tent and we all prepare for different things. Regardless of our threat assessments and conclusions, we do share the common goal of preparedness. Hopefully I've built enough credibility with you and you know me well enough to know that my interest lies in educating and preparing you, not shoving some political agenda down your throat. And when it comes to politics in a nutshell, I believe that those that we've entrusted with our well-being have sold us out to the highest bidder and have abandoned their duty of taking care of their constituents. And having gotten that out of the way, let's dive into the main content. Since mid-March of 2023, ocean temperatures have soared to unprecedented levels, with the highest average levels observed in 40 years of satellite monitoring. Now, this global phenomenon is triggering disruptive effects across the globe. The Sea of Japan is experiencing temperatures more than 7 degrees Fahrenheit above average, while the Indian monsoon, closely linked to the conditions in the Indian Ocean, has been notably weaker than expected. Spain, France, England, and the Scandinavian Peninsula are witnessing significant reductions in rainfall, likely due to an extraordinary marine heat wave in the eastern North Atlantic, where sea surface temperatures have been up to 5 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the average from the coast of Africa all the way to Iceland. Now, it is worth pointing out that on this channel, we've recently been discussing the weather pattern shifts to an El Nino cycle and what that entails. El Nino, a phenomenon characterized by warmer waters in the central and eastern Pacific, is partially responsible for the rising temperatures. But the recent absence of La Nina, which has a cooling effect, has also contributed to these recent temperatures. We explain both of these cyclical patterns plus where we are at between them as simply as I can in a prior video, which I'll link to below. But before you say, well, I've heard this all before, you may want to take a note of newly recorded data. North Atlantic sea surface temperatures are spiking incredibly. We've never seen this before since we started recording this information. As a result, ice levels are plummeting. There's a term for this. It's called a blue ocean event or BOE. And you're gonna hear a lot about this in the coming years. For the first time in human history, virtually all ice will melt from the Arctic seas in the coming decade if we continue along the current trend lines from observable data. Now, according to researchers, a blue ocean event starts once the Arctic sea ice extent falls below 1 million kilometers squared. When we cross that point is debated, but the trend lines show it's undeniably a part of our future. The problem, of course, is that snow and ice reflect the sun's energy, and without it, the oceans only get warmer faster. And this is where we fall into what is called a positive feedback loop. And to be honest, even our most prominent and brightest minds can barely express the true impact that this is gonna have on our collective future. One thing that most of them collectively agree on is that the blue ocean event will be the tipping point and a point of no return for us. Land-based ice sheets are melting as well. Greenland's ice sheet is also experiencing a record melt percentage. And all around the world, we're witnessing this. Long locked away glaciers in the Hindu Kush region of the Himalayan mountains are undergoing an alarming rate of melting faster than scientists have been predicting. Now, our science can't even keep up with this at the rapid rate of change. And this is gonna result in flooding in these regions, resulting in crops and human life loss. Let me pause for just a moment in this video. I realize this information is not overly optimistic to say the least, and there are more data points that I was about to run through in this video supporting the main argument. My goal when I sat down to prepare this video is not to be a Debbie Downer, but rather to try and take an honest look at what's playing out around us. But at the last moment before I recorded this video, I decided to edit out the remaining research and data 
because it's uh, depressing. Additionally, the more I dug into the research, the more I found scientists who work in this particular field that are beginning to quit. Some out of sheer depression and some because of frustration that they're not being listened to. I'll post links in the description section to additional research along with the ones that I've just covered. But here's the main takeaway if you're genuinely interested in learning more. The warning signs that we're seeing today will impact us the most in the form of future food shortages, which is why I talk about food production frequently on this channel. So let's get down to brass tacks. How do we know this is bad? To truly wrap our heads around the significance of these unprecedented in our lives rise in temperatures, we have to stretch our understanding far beyond our short, under a century lifetimes. Even with the collected stories and tales from our ancestors, we can only see back in time a few centuries. The actual recording of temperature is only slightly longer, 364 years. Now, the oldest continuous temperature record is the Central England Temperature Data Series, which began in 1659. Still, with this limited vision, scientists can extend our understanding of weather patterns for thousands of years. Through studying tree rings, isotopic analysis of ice core samples, sediment core samples, historical records of ancient observers, pollen analysis, and the fossil record, scientists can employ multiple indirect techniques to reconstruct past temperatures. Scientists can paint a reasonably accurate image of the overall weather patterns and temperatures from all of these sources. They've done this enough to conclude that humans have been enjoying what's called a Goldilocks zone of temperatures. This Goldilocks period gave rise to civilization, refined agriculture, allowed us to live in previously inhospitable areas, and allowed us to stop roaming land to obtain the resources we need to survive. We are not equipped to thrive outside of these stable ranges of temperatures and also just stay in one place. The results and impact. Just as we have to go beyond the evidence of our everyday to determine the historical weather, we have to go beyond the evidence of just our eyes and our daily lives. When you or someone you know makes comparisons like back in the summer of 1979 or add whatever year you want, it was way hotter than this. They limit their understanding of the predicament that we're collectively facing. When people argue the nuances of the causes like greenhouse gases, solar maximums, or even HARP, they are trying to link complexly interlaced climate to a single cause or no cause at all. In its simplest terms, they're missing the forest from the trees. The cause as to why this is all happening has been increasingly clear despite the few outlier arguments, and there's very little to any dissent within peer-reviewed data. But the sobering reality is that even with the knowledge that we have as to the causes, the will to make significant enough changes in our daily lives to alter the future is, how should I say it, not gonna happen. For some listening, this may be dismissive and fatalistic, and some may see me as a doomer. And as I always say on this channel, I'm a realist. There's a future I wish for, but there's a future I realize is highly probable. So here we are. As with most things that drive me to preparedness, I look at not what someone else can do for me, but whether what I should be doing to prepare my family. Like it or not, these dramatic shifts in temperature will bring about some pretty disastrous outcomes. What you should do now. The ability to just go about our daily lives like Goldilocks wandering through a house is rapidly ending. Our ability to science up a solution to a global problem is also outpacing our capabilities. And let's face it, most of us are not in a position to simply pull up stakes and head to a more temperature and weather stable zone. Taking that all into account, there are things that you can do, steps that you can take right now to brace for the impact of these changes and to live through them. Now, it may sound like a broken record sometimes, but it comes down to food, water, and shelter food. I say it a lot on this channel, but you must start growing your own food, at least at some level. And that can be sprouts, microgreens, a windowsill garden, a full outdoor garden, or chickens, rabbits, or goats. But you have to learn how to produce at least some of what you eat and free yourself from the dependence on a collapsing food production and distribution system. We've had multiple videos on this channel, and I'll link out to a playlist that we have on this subject. We have several more in the works that we're working on right now. You also need to diversify your eating and cooking strategies. As I mentioned earlier, there may be a time when wheat harvest may significantly decline. Can you pivot to other grains or make your daily bread when you're priced out of the market? When commercial businesses lack the ingredients to serve you the buns for your burgers or bread for your sandwiches, what are your other options? Food instability and insecurity will be the most visible result of these recent dramatic shifts in weather. Watch for crops to fell and world hunger to increase. We face some serious challenges. so. You have to have a three-pronged approach to your food security. Set aside, adapt to new foods, and grow something. Watch our video on building a year's food supply, and I would encourage you to start putting into practice things today before their absolute necessities to survive and there's really no room for error. 
Believe me, when it comes to something like gardening, there are many failures along the way as you learn what to do, so I encourage you to start it now. Water. Water is also something where you're going to want a personal supply to get you through periods of interrupted flow. In a drought, low levels can lead to algae flare-ups that may result in boil notices. Droughts can also result in dwindling supply. And when it comes to rain and massive downpours after a long drought, much of that doesn't absorb into the ground but results in flooding and overflowing sewer and drainage systems. Beyond just the water that you have set aside, do you have the means to treat and purify raw water sources into drinkable water? The CDC estimates there are up to 32 million cases of acute gastrointestinal illnesses per year in the United States from public drinking water systems. And that's with everything running what we would call smoothly. Imagine how that can change after an extreme weather event or two. Shelter. Finally, I have to say shelter is a consideration and it should be your first. If you do just three things in response to these shocking weather and oceanic temperature observations, food, water, and shelter should be those things. And when it comes to shelter, you have to ask yourself, how dependent are you on modern amenities to maintain a livable environment? If you live in an area that is pushing triple digit temperatures or below zero temperatures more and more days every year, you're gonna have a problem very soon. If you live in an area that is seeing more and more atmospheric rivers of rain punctuating long periods of drought, you're gonna have a problem soon. If you rely on air conditioning or heating to stay alive some days, ask yourself what you're gonna do if these services fell. If your area is prone to violent storms, excessive rain, or high winds, how are your shelter and the surrounding area equipped to cope with that, especially if it becomes more of the norm? Should you be clearing gutters, trimming branches, setting up a precipitation collection system, building a storm shelter, or planning evacuation routes? And when it comes to shelter, I mean the space that you live in, the area around that space, and the region you live in. These observable readings will eventually lead to forced migrations of people. Maybe that will just impact you indirectly, or maybe that will be you, but it's part of our shared future. Let me wrap this video up by saying this. I'm not interested in debating causes. I know the comment section is gonna be filled with various views on this issue, and I take no issue with that at all. I've laid out various reasons that can be observed, and they point to a clear conclusion. When I look at the recent observable data out there and make my own comparisons to previous data and records, I cannot deny the changes that are upon us. We're already in the early stages of the impact that this will have on us, and the coming years are gonna be much more difficult. That will result in a struggle for many, so I am more interested in the solutions I can plug in today to survive an increasingly unstable future. And I hope you are as well. What are your thoughts? Are you concerned about any of this? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, stay safe out there.